Over the past few years, my family and I have circumnavigated the Mediterranean, crossed the Atlantic Ocean, sailed up the Caribbean island chain, and the southeast coast of America. This season, we've sailed down the Caribbean island chain. All in all, we've racked up almost 30,000 nautical miles. In this episode, we're going to take you to four anchorages on the U.S. Virgin Island of St. John's, and we'll also take you to meet a sea lion named Omar on the U.S. Virgin Island of St. Thomas. When planning a sail around St. John's, Cruise Bay is where you'll find provisions, loads of bars and restaurants, in addition to water sports, car rental agencies, and ferries to other islands. Boaters can take a mooring ball outside Honeymoon Beach and easily dinghy into Cruise Bay. At the time of our visit in 2018, all mooring balls in the National Park were free of charge. Just imagine waking up to this lovely view in the morning. Upon entering Cruise Bay, you have to head into the harbor and then back to the left to park just outside the Virgin Islands National Park Visitor Center. Once your dinghy is tied up and locked, it's only a quick walk from the dinghy dock to the marketplace where you'll find a fantastic supermarket, hardware store, and pharmacy. Once you get your provisions, you can then play around and enjoy all the area has to offer. There are loads of eclectic bars and restaurants with excellent happy hour drinks and food menus. You can enjoy a beverage on the beach, grab some ice cream for the children. On a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, how good is it? 10,000. And stop for food and drinks at Mongoose Junction, an area with boutiques, art galleries, and very cool restaurants. The vibe is fantastic and everyone is always in a good mood. On this particular evening, we were celebrating Hayward and Ansley's wedding anniversary. They had their rehearsal dinner in this very restaurant 13 years ago. Hayward and Ansley are now live aboard cruisers with two kids on an Oceanus 461. We've been boat buddies with them since the Bahamas. While your boat is safely tied onto a National Park mooring ball, you might want to take a ferry over to St. Thomas for the day. Our plan was to take the ferry over and get a ride up to Coral World Ocean Park. The ferries are inexpensive and the journey is lovely. When you live and sail on a sailboat, nothing happens very fast. It's nice to get out on a boat that does over seven knots. On this particular occasion, we were very fortunate to be invited to Coral World on a day it was closed to the public. Ansley's a doctor of marine science, and until quitting her job and setting sail, she was a marine science teacher at a university in South Carolina. One of Ansley's students took a job at Coral World, and when she heard Ansley was in the area, she invited all of us for a private tour. We're, uh, we're all crammed in. We're going to Coral World. <laughs> and, we're, and we're driving on the proper side of the road, the English way. Coral World is a privately owned ocean park with a strong emphasis on ocean literacy, conservation, in general and specifically for turtles, coral reef, and shark research, and an amazing love for animals. Every staff member is totally in love with the animals they work with, especially our guide Aaron. After a day spent at the park with Aaron, all the kids wanted to become marine science majors. We can't release him because he can eat him right up. Oh god, that's a big fish. Oh, we have a queen parrotfish, princess parrotfish, we have... Okay, we have a lot of construction going on back here. We definitely have hope back here, but it will happen with all of the sea lions as they get older. Even with us, as we get older, our eyes start to go, and then our hips start to go, right? Our body kind of deteriorates after a lot of years, so same with the sea lions. And the first thing to go is their eyes. They're lucky to live into their late teens. But under human care, we can spoil them rotten with all the um, vet visits and give them all the best fish. They're living significantly longer, even into their 30s.
After Coral World, we took a bus ride around the island to take in some of the great sights. We then took the ferry back to St. John's. The day was filled with fun. The kids asked all sorts of incredible questions and the adults grinned from ear to ear after meeting a real sea lion. The plan for the next day is to leave the busyness of Cruise Bay behind and head to a quiet bay for swimming, hiking, and quiet going time. Going to another bay just to seek better shelter because it's a bit windy today and we're getting quite a few squalls. It's misty and the sun comes out and then it goes away and uh, so we're just going to seek out an anchorage that has better shelter. We're uh, going to Francis Bay which is just around the corner. It's only four miles. Um, it's a bit more sheltered. And it's supposed to be beautiful snorkeling there and there, so I'm really looking forward to it. The boat that's coming in behind me is Dauntless. They're friends of ours and it's a bit windy so what we tend to do when we're in a mooring field if we're you know available is we'll take our dinghy over and just help whoever's coming in because it, it's you know it's not the easiest thing to put lines on um, for a, a mooring ball. It can go wrong. You can see Dauntless coming in and Simon's on, on the mooring ball with a dinghy. So Simon's got the end of the mooring ball in his hand and he'll feed it up to Judy. All set, it's all done. You can see the clouds going by on the hilltop over here. It's beautiful. Okay, now we got Paravita coming in on the other side of us. And Simon's there to help them too. And this is a great thing about buddy boating. If you're with people and you're all sailing to different places together, Whoever gets there first can drop their dinghy and help each other get a mooring ball. We are going for the sailors off the boat, so we're going to go for an early warning walk. Six o'clock. And we've got coffee. Coffees, and we've got banana bread. Ready? Yep. Here's the trail, but it's uh, blocked off. They're repairing it now after the hurricane. So this is the Francis Britt Bay Trail. But they're working on it, so that's good news. Just looking around and you can tell that the trees, a lot of them are devoid of leaves. So I think when the hurricane came through here, it really stripped these trees. Well, I, I've been told that there was there was actually no leaves or no vegetation left. Oh, and so this is all what's growing back. This is what's growing back. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah, what happened was that as the hurricane went through, it took all the water out. And then when the, when the other side of the hurricane came, pa came past, it br apparently brought in a 20 foot surge. Jeez, I just can't imagine so it, that. This would have been flooded, this yeah. area. Well, you can tell it looks like it got flooded. Yeah. That is a... Chimney? Chimney, so I think that's a boiling, boiling room. Boiling room? Which you, I don't know what my guess is. No, it's a boiling room because it's got the two little holes in the bottom there. Okay. Where the fire and the heat go in. Okay, I'm going to say it was a sausage factory. Okay. And like a great majority of the properties here, the roof is next to it. How's the coffee? Hot. Oh, 
out through the bottom of this area you can see green plants growing. So that's a good sign too. And here's the Annaberg Sugar Plantation. It's like 7 in the morning and this is a rare treat for us because Sienna slept over at a friend's house so we could just get up and do anything we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you some people are thinking, oh, I would have been doing something else. <laughs> the Annaberg Plantation, as of 1780, was one of the 25 active sugar producing factories on St. John. Other products produced at Annaberg were molasses and rum. Annaberg was named after William Gottschalk's daughter and translates to Anna's Hill. Gottschalk was the plantation owner and slave labor was used to clear densely forested hillsides and to terrace the slopes around Annaberg to make farming possible. Slave labor was also used to plant, harvest, and process the sugarcane. When slavery was abolished, plantations were divided. The 518 acres that were once Annaberg Plantation were divided into smaller farms. Today, the plantation ruins are protected by the Virgin Island National Park and are open to the public. Trees have reclaimed the hillside around Annaberg. A trail leads through factory ruins, slave quarters, windmill, and other remains. Place cards and signs along the trail describe how sugar was produced and discuss plantation life and the history behind sugar plantations on St. John and, in particular, Annaberg. Okay, through there is, uh, all this is the British Virgin Islands. That's Soper's Hole. Those two is Great Hatch and Little Hatch. And over on the far side is Yoshan Lake. Well, I imagine Sienna might be up by now. <laughs> yeah. They're going, where's their dinghy? Yeah. I'm sure they've recognized that we left the boat. <laughs> probably, <laughs> I hope so. probably wondering where we are. So, time to head back. Mm -hmm. Francis Bay is one of the longest beaches in St. John. It is usually less crowded than other beaches, and with a bit of a walk, you'll always find a private spot. The water is very calm, so it's great for kids. It has very clear water, and it actually made a ranking on TripAdvisor for the 12 clear water beaches that you need to see to believe. So is it getting any uh, easier to start the engine sign? No. It's still quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Does that ever happen? Once it's warm, it starts first time. Oh, okay. This is where our daughter is. <laughs> oh, nice walk. Our daughter wanted to stay on Pura Vida, so we headed out. Princess Bay? Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. We enjoyed the hike over to the sugar mill. And, and it was flat calm, even though there was a lot of wind. Yeah really great anchorage and there is a ton of mooring balls here so fantastic place to stay for the night yeah and good swimming on the beach too very very good swimming so those are the u.s virgin islands and i'm just going to pan across there's simon and over there these here are the british virgin islands As usual, 30 knots of uh, wind right on our nose. So, no sailing in this direction. <laughs> so, we've just come around the corner and you can see where Simon and I hiked to earlier, the Annaberg Sugar Plantation. And it's right there in the hill. Now it's time to stop in Leinster Bay to go snorkeling as we heard it's a great spot to see fish.
Officer Bay. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Right over there. We think that probably on St. John's that was the best place um, so, far. so far for seeing fish and snorkeling. We saw all sorts there. Now we're going over to Coral Bay. So how long is that going to take us? Hour and a half. Hour and a half and then we'll anchor there for the night hopefully. Yeah. It's rough out there. It's a low in 30 knots too. So Pura Vida is right there in front of us. Something has happened where their engine's not working. And we think it might be because there's a lot of seagrass out here. To show you this. There's tons of it. So we think it's possible that maybe his intakes have pulled in and his filters are potentially full. So what he's doing now is he's getting his head sail out to buy some time to go downstairs to look into his strainers. And we've we've slowed right down so we can just stay behind him and see how we can help. Got the sail out. He's not packing so we can get away from the cliffs there and the shallows. Once you've got some speed Turn and tuck your head towards Hotel when you're going to deeper water over. Okay, so start turning, turning to the right, let, let the wind take you, and then you might have to jive over. Uh -huh. Okay, they're turning into the wind now. They have to actually turn in towards the cliff because the boat won't go the other way. It's looking good, they're turning. The wind is filling up the sail. Now this is going to give them the power they need to get away from these cliffs and shallows. Okay, now see if you can go now and start heading out into the middle of the channel as best you can over. Just Okay, you've got to jive now. You've got to jive. Jive it. Get the, get the, the ropes working on the other side over. Back. Back. Around. Um. Vita's prop seems to not be working, so it stops. So there could be something wrapped around the prop. Simon just asked him to try going maybe in reverse. They could have run over a line, or they could have, there's a lot of grass out of here that could have gotten clogged up in there, but they are not having any ability to use the, they're, they're not getting any forward motion right now. Okay, so let me make sure I heard you correctly. Head towards the British Virgin Islands and then take the sail down channel. Yeah, go into mid-channel, then we get the sail in, and then we'll see how the engine's going without the sail. Okay, gotcha. Copy that. Good, you're doing great. So Simon and I were talking about what our um, plan, plan B is going to be in case they can't get the prop moving again, what we're going to suggest is that they sail back to the anchorage or the mooring field that we were just in. We'll go ahead of them. We'll put our boat on a mooring ball and drop our dinghy. And then by the time they come around, they can sail in and we can help guide them to a mooring ball. And then it'll be a much safer place for us to go under the boat and check out and see what's happening with the prop. Okay, do you want to try it now? It's quite mid channel -ish, so we'll try to take the sail down and see what the motor does. That's affirmative, over, but stay in mid-channel. In around 25 to 30 knots of wind. Pravita is right there. Well, they've got themselves out into the mid-channel, so now they've got a lot more time to play with. They're not near any land. So they're going to take their sail in now and see if they can get forward mo movement with their prop. Okay, well, all I say is you keep in mid-channel, don't head for that point, just keep going straight, follow where that cat is from, from roughly there. Once we get past and we can sail, we'll then get the sail out to uh, help us with the engine over. We're heading um, along the Carter, middle Carter, of the middle. channel. We're not going to cut the corner like we normally would, and we're going to make sure that there's a lot of room for uh, for Avita to sail, but as it stands now, their engine is working, they are going forward. Carter, Carter, Carter. 
I think there might be something awry though. They said that it's not working as norm as it normally does. So we're heading out so that we can clear all the land down this way. It'll be interesting to see what the problem was. So it's the first time since so the way to take off. Yeah, the since uh, pretty much the Bahamas that we've sailed. So, Mad. yeah, madness. it is madness, <laughs> but it feels nice. We have turned off the engine. Yahoo! Yahoo! We are sailing! Okay, so we've turned and Pervy just behind us with our sail out. Now it's just a sail down to Coral Bay. Coral How does it feel to sail? Heaven. Much better. Coming into Princess Bay right here now. Once we were on a mooring ball, we dropped the dinghy and headed to shore. By the time we tied onto the balls, Pura Vida's propulsion and engines seemed to be working fine. It's a mystery as to what happened. Get the seal and bacon, and look at that. Look at that burger. Wow, that looks cool. Mm -hmm. And I got turkey and Swiss on rye. Who's better, the hot dog or the burger here? Cheeseburger! The burger? Okay, so if anyone comes to Skinny Legs, they need to get the burger. Yeah, yeah. Tell everybody! Okay. After our trip to land, sailing vessel Dauntless invited us over. Jim and Judy charter their 52-foot Chinoo throughout the Caribbean. <laughs> Is that the question he kept saying? <laughs> Look at the space in here. There's a lot of space. Wow. Yes. Yes. Is this the guest bedroom or is this the main it bedroom? It is the guest here. Room. Now it's my room. When guests are on board, it'll be their room. Their room. Wow, <laughs> this is nice. Yeah, Actually, let me show you all the cool lights. Oh, oh they're like oh, under bed lighting. Oh, yeah. Oops, sorry, sorry. Oops, the doors are here. Yeah, oh my gosh. You know. After a pleasant evening with Jim and Judy, we went to bed, woke up the next day, and headed for the British Virgin Islands. So here we are, just coming out the hurricane hole, which is there. Here's the lovely Kim coming back. Thank you, Princess Bay, for having us. Yeah, thank you. Please subscribe to our channel as we produce new videos every week. Coming next is our sail to and around the British Virgin Islands. Travel with us to Virgin Gorda and the famous baths. We'll also visit Limerick Bay. We'll dive the Rhone, a shipwreck, and many, many more anchorages around the British Virgin Islands. Aside from creating weekly videos about our travel destinations, we also provide how-to videos and articles in addition to sailing guides for couples and families that want to take the exciting leap from living on land to becoming full-time live-aboard sailing cruisers. Please subscribe to this channel and make sure to visit sailingbritikin.com to request one of our free guides.